Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live chat. Happy June. Isn't it crazy how fast the year seems to be flying by? Um, I'm really excited to be here on another Thursday at 3 o'clock Central chatting live about different machine quilting techniques and then answering your questions live. So in this video or this live chat, we're going to be talking about the dot to dot quilting technique. Now, these live chats kind of started throughout the Free Motion Challenge Quilting Along video series, and then I realized that there's been some past video series that I haven't been able to do live chats through, so we're going we're gonna to fix that retroactively. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about the dot to dot quilting technique. I've got some questions to answer, and then of course, lots of quilty eye candy to give you some good inspiration. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the chat. I have Jessica here helping me kind of monitoring them, and she'll pass them along to me. And if I don't get to your questions, leave them in the comments below after the chat's over because I get back from time to time, I get on there from time to time and check them out and answer them. So, so, so glad you're joining me. I don't take it lightly that you would spend your afternoon with me for 30 minutes talking about quilting. So first of all, real quick, couple of announcements. Last week's live chat, I talked about my brand new low shank rulers. Good news, they are in, so they have shipped. If you've ordered, yours has shipped. One thing I wanna point out is the different packaging. So if you're checking out on the website, look for this red dot if you are going for the low shank version. If you're not, you can look for that one. If you order them and you ordered the wrong one, don't open them, contact us and we can switch it out for you, no problem. So again, low shank rulers have shipped, so if you've ordered those, definitely check those out. And as a fun little little hint, little teaser. I'll have three brand new rulers coming out with um, creative grids in September. So that's not the last you're gonna see of some fun machine quilting rulers. Okay, so let's talk about dot to dot quilting. So dot to dot quilting is a technique that I love to use because it works in so many different ways on so many different quilts. And when I'm teaching this as a class, I love to get on it or like to start by joking by saying, it's so easy, you're gonna think, I can't believe I paid a class, you know, paid for a class to learn this but I'm telling you, you can really take it so far and create so many different variations. What makes it so basic and easy is it's only made up of two basic shapes, two different shapes that you use in a bunch of different ways. So what I'm gonna do is kind of pop over to my overhead and I'm gonna draw out some of the basic designs just so you can see how they go, they go together. And then I'll show you lots of quilted samples. Now, as we're going through, I wanna encourage you that I do have a whole video series on dot to dot quilting. So you can check out the link in the description box below and it will take you to the page on my website that has all the videos, all the free diagrams and all that information. So if you're looking at this and you're like, I don't know, this looks kind of interesting, then definitely, definitely check that out. And just like all the other free motion challenge quilting alongs, it's totally free. It's a video series that stays out there whenever you're ready to do it. So, okay, let's go to the overhead. And if you did the help, how do I quilt it? Free motion challenge quilting along, this might look familiar. This is the panel from that challenge. Um, this was actually the first challenge that I designed a custom panel for. So there's no panel for the dot to dot quilting. You're just gonna have to practice on some fabric or you could get this panel and fill in the spaces. It's just not gonna be what I'm quilting on in the videos. So when we talk about dot to dot quilting, the dots that we're referring to are reference points on the quilt that we're gonna use to create our designs. So the first one that we're gonna talk about, the diamond design, the dots that we're gonna be working with are on the corners of my blocks, as well as a dot or an imaginary point about a half inch inside my corners. So that usually brings up the question about marking. You can definitely mark out the whole design if you'd like, or you can just mark out those dots you can do whatever helps you be comfortable with the design, right? In the beginning, I might have done a little bit more marking, but now that I feel a little bit more comfortable, I do it without that. So I wanna show you a couple of tips real quick. So one thing that I love, 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 love for marking out my dots or any kind of reference lines are these designs with line stencils. So this one is the basic eight, and what's great about it is I can line them up on the corners of my block, and it's gonna quickly give me the center point as well as my radiating lines. Of course, you don't have to have that, but it is very, very helpful. Um, Handy Quilter recently came out with something fun. It's actually a ruler. It's called the Eight Point Crosshair. It does the same thing, a little bit more sturdy. So if you want something that's a little bit more, you know, beefy and it's gonna, you know, be easier to mark, you can definitely do that. I use a stencil mostly just because I love using the pounce pad. So what I do is just lay it out here where I want it to go. And then these pounce pads are just basically chalk pads. They have blue, white, and we have a new pink color, which is so fun. I don't know what it is about a different color that makes things so appealing, but I've got my blue one. 
and I can just mark it right here, rub it, and then it's gonna mark out those reference lines for me nice and quick. One of the benefits of just marking out the reference lines is that it's less you know, marks to remove, and it's also, you don't get confused as you're quilting. Sometimes when you mark out the whole design, it can be really confusing to know where to go next. So let me encourage you to start by marking reference lines, but if you need to mark the whole design, you can definitely do it. So I have my corners, and let's pretend I'm gonna start from this corner. So one corner I'm gonna touch, I'm gonna start touching that corner, but the next dot I'm gonna go to is gonna be about a half inch inside the next corner, right? So here's my first one I'm gonna to touch, the second one I'm not gonna to touch, and I'm gonna quilt a line that goes up to that. Now, I normally would just freehand it, but you know, I'm gonna use this as a ruler just to kind of keep it nice and straight. We'll talk about rulers and all that kind of stuff in just a second. We're just gonna, we're learning the design right now. So touching, not touching, and now I'm gonna to go to the next corner and touch it. So I'm gonna go up to that next dot, which is that reference point that we're using. So, so far so good, right? Nice and basic. Again, we'll talk about what it looks like to actually quilt this, but we're just learning the design. And now that I have that, I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So I'm not gonna to touch. I'm gonna to look to a reference point right about there. And I'm gonna to return to where I started. This is what makes the design amazing. You can get in this block, you can quilt the whole thing and return back to where you started. So this is like the basic shape that we're working with. And what's nice is once you are done with the design, you can either rub this off or spray it with water and then that marking will go away. So this perfect or this design is perfect for blocks of all sizes, but mostly smaller to middle size blocks. Anywhere from like two to six, eight inches. Once we get bigger blocks, those lines get longer and longer straight lines are not as easy to quilt as shorter straight lines. But if I do have a bigger block that I wanna fill in or I, I wanna add some more quilting, I can repeat those steps again, going to that next corner, going just inside of it, and then quilting the line that goes there, onto the next side, and the same on the other side. So basically, I can keep adding these echo lines, adding them in, adding them in, until I'm happy with the way it looks. Maybe I want the quilting to be a little bit more dense, so I'll add some more lines, or maybe I just don't know what I'm gonna do in the next area, so I just kinda stop there. That's the basic technique we're gonna be working with, and trust me, I'm gonna show you a lot of ways to use that. But one quick thing I wanna point out right now before we go to the second design, is this design is gonna bring me back to where I started. Now that's perfect if that's where I need to go, but if I need to end up on the other side, let's say I'm stringing these together or I'm quilting a row of blocks, it's really easy just to quilt a straight line across to the other side or to fill in the space with a different filler. One of my favorites is wishbones, but you could use anything, swirls, anything that's gonna help fill it in and get you to the other side. Now, that's a diamond design. Basically, we're touching some corners and not touching others. It did take me about 10 minutes to teach just that sentence, but you know, it's a skill that I have. The next one that we're gonna talk about is the starburst design. And this is, instead of a V, we're just making a wedge or a triangle. And this is gonna be better for bigger blocks because it's gonna fill in those bigger blocks with shorter lines, but still create a really neat effect. So I'm gonna scoot this up just a bit. Let's look at our next guy right here. Again, if I wanted to, I could use my ruler or my stencil, and that's gonna help me find the center of my block that helps. And the dots I'm gonna use for this design are gonna, is gonna be the center. And then I'm also gonna look to the middle of each side. So here's my little square I'm filling it in. I'm looking to the midpoint. And I'm also gonna be using the corners. So several dots here, but mostly all around the outside, the corners and the midpoints. Again, using the stencil will really quickly help you mark out those points if you want or you can just eyeball them, it's gonna be, be fine. All right, so I'm gonna start in the center, and this design, I'm gonna create my triangle by quilting a line that goes directly up to the top edge, although here it's to the side because it's turned. I'm gonna quilt up or to the edge, but I'm gonna stop about a half inch away from the edge of my area. Here is what makes this design look great. If you don't remember anything else, remember this. I don't wanna run it into the edge because then it will just look like lines going over there. I wanna leave about a quarter inch space between the edge and my design. But once I get to that edge, I'm gonna echo the side of it till I get about a quarter inch away from the next corner, and then I'm gonna return home. Right, so I'm gonna come right back to my center point. So basically I have a, a weird piece of pizza looking design. So I'm basically gonna repeat that, quilting my wedges in the block, always returning home. If you're not sure where to go, go home. So 
if I'm right here, I'm gonna swing out, I'm gonna pull up my next wedge, but I wanna keep them close to each other. So as I come out, there's gonna be about a quarter inch spacing right here. Now, you don't have to remember all this because I have the video that goes into a lot of detail. I also have the downloadable quilting diagrams. I'm just kind of giving you the basics here. And then I'm gonna echo the side and then what? Go home, right? I'm gonna return to the center and I have my second wedge. So what I'm doing is creating a dot to dot design but the lines aren't gonna be as long and that's what makes it great for bigger blocks. And I'm gonna continue working my way around, quilting my wedges, keeping the wedges close. Right? I want to keep them close to each other. I don't want any gaps. But let me tell you what I am not worrying about. I am not worrying if the wedges are all the same size. I'm not even worrying that all my lines perfectly come back to the center. I mean, that's the ideal, but you know, it's going to look fine. I just want to fill in this whole block as much as possible before I move on. So here is that shape. So basically, if I were to put this in a nutshell, I am using the edges of my area to determine the shape of my wedges. In this square, it seems pretty obvious, right? Because it's gonna fill an area. But when we start talking about triangles and stars and different shapes, we're gonna really see how the edge is going to kind of dictate the shape of our wedge, the edge and the wedge. Anyway, so those are the basic ones here. If you are gonna mark out the whole design, just make sure you test out your marking utensil before you start. I like water soluble markers, but these Frixon pins are also really nice to mark. Um, and you have to remember that once you mark it, you're going to eventually erase the markings. So don't worry if your lines aren't perfectly on it. We just want to get it close, okay? So those are the two basic shapes. We have our diamond design and our starburst or our wedge. Two basic shapes. But now let me show you some quilted examples of these. And I think you're gonna see how much fun you can have with this design. Plus, I have a lot of questions about where and why you would use this, so we'll address that. But before we get to the pictures, this is where I normally do a disclaimer. This is meant to be inspiring, not overwhelming. So as I'm flipping through these pictures, you might think, oh my gosh, that is a lot of things to remember. It's just my persuasive argument to make you love the designs as much as I do. So don't feel like you, know, you have to remember everything I'm showing you. Plus, the good thing about having it on the video screen is that you can always come back and revisit the samples. So let's look at the first diamond design. This is just kind of the, the uh, diagram in one of the handouts. It lets you see it a little bit better in case the pen didn't show up enough. So there we can see we've, we're touching two of our corners and we're not touching the others. And that spacing on those ones that don't touch, it's up to you. Whatever you feel like doing. One thing I would say is try to keep it symmetrical. That's it. If it's symmetrical, it'll look perfect even if it's not, okay? So there's the first one that we're working with. And then our starburst design, where we're starting from the center or a home point. So we're gonna see this change in here in a second, but our home point happens to be in the center and all the lines are coming back to that to fill in the area with these wedges. So I'm gonna pause real quick because there was a great question and I couldn't, I didn't catch the name, unfortunately. But it said, how do you do dot to dot if you can't quilt straight lines? Okay, that's a thing, right? So quilting a straight line is a little, can be a little tricky, a little overwhelming. We're aiming for smooth. And if you have a hard time getting that straight line, replace it with a curved line. Any of these lines can be a gentle curve. It'll give you a slightly different look, but it's still gonna let you learn how the design goes together. So if you're struggling with that, that will help you. Another thing you can do is round out some of these points. So in this particular Starburst design, maybe I don't want something so angular, or maybe I'm in a rush I can round out those corners and make it look a little bit softer, a little bit more organic. So right off the bat, two things you can do to change it up is to switch out the line and round out the corners. Okay, so just put that there. But let's see some actual quilted examples because I think it's important to see how to use designs on a quilt. It's one thing to learn how to quilt a design, but where do you use it and how and in which ways? So this is gonna be my persuasive argument to make you love it. So this is the dot to dot quilt from the challenge. And you remember I talked about adding that middle line? That's in case I wanna move on to the opposite side. So in this example, I was able to quilt each of these designs continuously without breaking thread. And that was actually a question that came up. You know, how do you quilt dot to dot in a negative space? This would be how you could do it. Or how do you connect an all, an all over dot to dot pattern? You're gonna look for a way to connect your designs. Now the good thing is, in the dot to dot free motion challenge, I talk about that. How do you uh, create a transition in between your designs, so you can check that out. 
but just know that you can hook them together and string them together to make border designs, um, all over designs, or even background areas. Okay, but we can also use the quilting to create the shapes that we want to quilt. So this is basically the diamond design in four triangles. I just used the quilting to create an X in my square to make four triangles, and then I quilted that diamond design, the touch, don't touch, touch, so that it worked its way around. This is how I would use this design in larger blocks if I didn't want to quilt a really long line. This is also going to help kind of draw attention to the center of the block and kind of change up the look of the block that you're working with. Now, a great question came through. Um, Judy said, you talking about me, like, I wouldn't want to use this technique on a busy fabric quilt, would I? I wouldn't myself because I know I'm going to be using my rulers and it takes a little bit longer to do. So if I feel comfortable with this design, I'm probably going to save it in areas that you can see it. But if you're learning this technique, Busy Fabrics is the perfect place to practice because you're not gonna, you're not gonna see any problems anyway. So you can use it in a lot of different kinds of quilts. And different shapes. So this particular quilt is from Julie Herman and it was from her Alphabet Soup quilt book, or Alphabet Soup book. And it's made up of diamonds and half hexagons. And this dot to dot design still works in those. So when you're working with these irregular shapes, like hexagons, there were a couple questions about how to use them in hexagons, or as my husband's grandpa would have said, hexagons. Um, if you're filling them in hexagons, I'm just going to connect some dots and not connect the others. So you can really take those irregular shapes, especially if you're working with um, paper pieced or improvisationally pieced blocks that are all kind of all over the place, you can still use this technique. And in the J, you can see towards the top that elongated diamond perfect. It doesn't matter what shape it is. I just need some corners to touch and some corners to not touch. That's basically what I'm looking for. Here in the O of her same quilt or different quilt, same technique, I'm able to quilt those dot to dot lines and then work my way around the block. So here you can see I have three in each one of those half hexagon or trapezoids, whatever you would want to call them. You can add as many of those echo lines as you need to. Now, the rule of thumb that I have, and this might be getting a little too deep into it, if you do an odd number of those lines, you're gonna move on. If you do an even number, you're gonna come back. So here, I wanted to move on so I could go on to the next one. That's why there's three lines. That's the only reason. Not because I love the look of it or three is a magic quilting number. It just helped me move on to the next piece of the block. So if I had wanted to return to my starting point, I would have done two. So usually when I'm looking at a quilt, the first thing I'm trying to decide is where do I need to go? And then that kind of helps me dictate what design I'm gonna actually use. But for your purposes, just know you can add as many or as few lines as you want, depending on the size. This design I use almost exclusively in flying geese. Those triangles are usually, flying geese triangles are usually pretty small and it's hard to fit anything too ornate in that area. And so then I just go with this easy diamond design to fill in that area. What's nice about it is it's going to highlight two of the corners by drawing attention and coming to them and kind of echoing the side to create that kind of diamond or triangle shape. Here's the thing to remember though, if my lines of quilting go directly to a corner, it's going to draw attention to that. So make sure it's the corners that you pieced well. So the one instance when I wouldn't do this would be if the corners of my flying geese were not pieced very well. But one thing I want to show you is if you look in the gray triangles that are opposite, especially in that yellow row, you can see in between two, there's like a diamond design that kind of comes to a point to the top and the bottom. All I've done there is I've taken that triangle and I've treated it as two smaller triangles. And those lines are touching the corners that are at the bottom and the top. So now what I'm doing is instead of quilting my lines all the way to those outer corners, I'm kind of bringing attention to the center, the top and the bottom. So you can use it in even smaller spaces and as a way to determine what areas you wanna show off. I can't tell you how important this is. If you can hide or highlight your mistakes or your best piecing, show them off or hide it, it's really gonna make you a lot more happy with the result. So don't, don't be afraid to switch up which ones you're touching or break up shapes into smaller ones. Again, you can use this in diamond shapes, anything with corners, but you can also combine it with a different filler. So in this particular example, um, it's a little, small little block I quilted. I put the back and forth lines inside of my diamond design, but then in some of them, I put them on the outside. 
you can really play around with this and find some fun variations. And like I said already, you can use different designs, um, different densities, and really create different effects with it. Now, one thing I want to point out is about rulers. Now, if I'm quilting this technique on a long arm, I'm going to use a ruler because I can't quilt a nice straight-ish diagonal line on the long arm without it. The way the long arm works, there's different sets of wheels and kind of engaging them to do that diagonal can be a little tricky. So definitely gonna use a ruler, but on your sewing machine, you don't have to. We're gonna aim for a nice smooth line, straight-ish, right? And so in the dot to dot challenge, I show you how to do it on a sewing machine without a ruler and with a ruler. So you can definitely check that out. But main point, you can use some different fillers to create different effects and throw them in different areas of the block to show up different things. You also don't have to connect all the dots of your block or you can use them in between blocks right i just need some dots so here we can see i have two of those diamond designs what i did is i took my designs with line stencil um, i have one that looks like a grid or like straight lines and i just kind of created my square but then i only did one side of each so look for areas of negative space that you can use this to echo the outside of a block or to add a little bit of interest and as a side note, it can be a lot quicker than the filler you're putting around it. So sometimes it looks like I did a little bit more extra quilting, but I made it a little easier on myself. So um, it depends on the filler I'm using and, and what, what I'm going for, but you can definitely use this in between blocks and that's where you can find out, find those fun, unexpected designs that you weren't really, you know, expecting. And again, let's look at some more irregular shapes. So this is a quilt block by Julie Herman. She makes a lot of these really fun, um, different shapes. And so just using that dot to dot to make it a little bit easier to quilt. Since, the, since I quilted those in groups of two, right? I quilted out and back. I know they're all gonna bring me back to where I started. And so I'm able to quilt along that whole circle and continue on. So it can be very efficient. If it's taking you a long time to quilt the design, it might be worth trying to tweak it a little bit and see what you can come up with. You can also use it in borders. So that was another question that came up. It was like, can I use this in borders or backgrounds? Definitely. As you start adding more echo lines and more filler, it starts looking more and more complex. People get more and more impressed. And when they say, what a great job you did, you just say, thanks. It took forever, but you're worth it or something similar. So you can really make this look pretty intricate. And this particular block was a large block. And I just started using the quilting lines to break it up and make it a little bit easier to manage. This is especially helpful for those of you with small throated sewing machines. All right, so for my gals that were asking about how to use dot to dot in hexagons, here you go. So hexagons can be either broken up into three diamonds or quilted as one shape. And we'll see how to quilt it as one shape here in a second. But in this tumbling block variation um, that Tula quilted or made for her book or the book that we wrote together, um, I use a dot to dot quilting on those side diamonds. Again, same diamond design, touching, not touching, returning back to where I started and moving on. I even use the quilting around the outside to create a couple more of those shapes because they were so fun to quilt and then filled them in. So you can use them in those tumbling blocks, hexagons, or use the quilting to create the shape that you wish you had. So again, you have to remember that when you're done, you're gonna step back, you're gonna see the whole quilt. So if your line is a little bobbly, it's not perfectly straight, it's okay, we're gonna keep putting more lines around it, it's gonna look fine, okay? So just don't be too stressed out about the straightness of the line, just aim for smooth and try to keep it symmetrical, that'll help you out. Okay, again, in between blocks. So this is another quilt by Julie Herman, for, I can't remember, I think it might be Daybreak, I can't remember the name of it, um, but the area in between those stars was the perfect space to create a little bit of dot-to-dot -dot designs. And if you can see that tiny, tiny filler I was quilting around it, Adding a couple more echo lines just filled in the space quicker, made it a little bit easier than just doing swirls, but also created a really neat secondary design. Now, if you have been watching my live chats for a while or any of my video series, you know I'm easily amused and I love creating secondary designs because it just adds a little bit of extra to the quilting. So when you step back, you kind of see these blocks grouped together. It kind of continues along and it looks like a lattice behind it. So it's, you look at one shape and you might think, oh, that's pretty basic but you have to see it in context of everything else. And that's when those basic shapes can look really interesting. Now we also saw dot to dot quilting in the help how do I quilt it challenge. So when you're working with pieced blocks, it definitely works. So pieced blocks, you can just take the quilting and create the shape. So in that square, I did the same thing. I quilted a triangle that I wanted and then I did the dot to dot design inside of it. But you can also see 
by quilting that dot to dot design, that diamond design around the outside using those corners just helps give it a little bit of a different echoing and helps kind of group it together. Again, this is going to show off this block. It's going to show off certain points where all those lines come together. So make sure it's a block that you love. Now, usually when I'm teaching this live and people can ask questions, the question I get asked is, you know, what about all those lines of quilting coming to the corner? Is that going to get too thick? Is the quilting going to overwhelm it? Well, this is why I like using a 40 weight thread or a 50 weight thread. So glide thread, you know, superior so fine, that thinner thread is going to keep it from being too bulky. But the reality is that's just the design. It's going to draw your eyes to those corners because it has more lines to it. So it's supposed to do that would be the short answer. But if you don't like it, you know, using that thinner thread will help. Plus, as a bonus, adding more lines helps hide if your first ones didn't quite make it to the corner. So if you're quilting and you're like, oh, it didn't quite end up where you want it to be, just add a couple more till it all goes away. I promise, I promise, I promise it works. So when you start looking at your blocks though, especially piece blocks, this is again from the um, Help How Do I Quilt It, you can start connecting those points on your quilt. So if you look at the, you know, the uh, the pink as one big square. Basically, I'm quilting that dot to dot design from the corner, corner to corner, but then switching it on other sides. So it's creating this secondary effect and it's gonna be a really fun way to show off that fabric. Again, if this is not my favorite fabric in the quilt, this is probably not the design I'm gonna do in it. But in this particular example, I wanted to show it off, so it worked great. And then filling around or filling in the space with a different design, a contrasting design is really gonna help complete that effect. If I had quilted the star shape on both corners and didn't like how it turned out, I'm definitely not going to put those wishbones around it because it's going to show it off. I might add some more echo lines. I might add echo inside those things until it all kind of goes away. You can also use the quilting to group blocks. So if you're working with a piece block with lots of little squares, that can be really difficult because you're like, oh, what am I going to put in here? use the quilting to group them together. So this particular triangle was made up of triangles and I just use the quilting to group several of them together and then quilt the dot to dot design in it. You might think, oh, that could be overwhelming or that might not look right. But when you step back, you still see the beautiful piecing throughout it and you have that subtle secondary effect. And this is ex not, and that's not the case in this quilt, not for this quilt, but if I had made this quilt and some of the blocks weren't pieced well, this would be a great way to help hide, hide that. So. Let's say that very middle dark gray triangle was the one where I chopped off all sorts of corners. This is a great way to not draw attention to it by not having any lines come to that corner. Not that that was the case here, but definitely for pieced areas. Now, when we talk about that diamond design or you know, echoing, um, we saw how you can use it outside of a block, but you can also use that diamond design to make areas more manageable. So this is from the Echoes and Curves Challenge. And what I'm doing here is I'm adding that diamond design and then filling in with that plume feather. So why, why do that? Well, I know the plume feather works best in longer, more stretched out shapes, pointier shapes, as opposed to squares on side, on its side. So like a diamond shape, a little bit more stretched out. So I can add those echo lines to make the space, the shape that I want to fill in. This is what's really fun about machine quilting. If I'm not, if I'm working on a quilt and I don't have the shape I want to quilt, I can just create it and then fill it in. So use that technique to make areas more manageable. Now here you can see a quilt that I did. It's very solid. It's very modern, very angular, right? So using the dot to dot, and if you, you can maybe see a couple different techniques in there, there's that, you know, um, the starburst design and those long pointy yellow triangles. The home base, instead of being in the center, is on the middle of a side. Everything's still the same. I'm still quilting up to the edge, coming back to that home base and I'm using some um, diamond design to quilt in the negative space, and then even in those really large blocks, extending those lines out. So if you're not sure if this design is gonna work in a block, just try sketching it out. It doesn't have to be true to size, but you can kind of get an idea of what it will look like. And I'll be honest, when I started this quilt in particular, it's been a long time, but I wasn't sure how it was gonna turn out. I just kind of started connecting dots and, and, and connected and kind of creating these effects. So don't feel like you have to have the whole plan before you start because you're probably gonna change it anyway. So just know what you're gonna do in a couple areas and then get started. So there is, that brings us to our starburst design, our beautiful starburst design that's going to fill in those bigger areas, but you can use it in small areas as well. And you might have noticed when I drew it out that I started in the center and I ended in the center. Now that's all well and good if I have unlimited quilting time, but how do I move on to the next one without breaking thread? 
Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quilt a line from the side directly into the center, quilt my block, and then move on to the next. And here you can see on the midpoint of those squares, there's an extra line that goes in and comes out. You might have noticed it before I pointed out. You might not have. It's because there's other lines there that kind of disappears. With this particular design, you will notice the unquilted space in the wedges, not so much the extra lines. So it can be very efficient and you can string it together for larger borders. Or like I said, if you have blocks that are all in a row. Now remember that home base where they all came to that home point in the example, that first example, I put it in the very center of the block because maybe I want to show off the center. Or maybe I want it to be nice and symmetrical, but sometimes you can move it around to create a different effect. So this particular one is actually from the dot to dot challenge. That home base is not in the center. It's pulled down a little bit, but everything is the same. I'm still quilting out to the edge, echoing the side and then coming back to that home base. It just means that some of my wedges will be shorter and some will be longer. Now I love to use this for blocks on point or for more wonky kind of novelty quilts. Maybe it's a fun, funky kind of quilt. It's just really neat to throw it off a little bit. But if you're going to move that home base off the perfect center, you need to move it enough that it looks intentional. So don't just scoot it down a little bit. That will just look like you were trying to hit the center, but didn't. So if you're going to make a mistake, make it good. Go all the way down. So make sure it looks intentional, whatever you do. And here's a little bit of a smaller example of that. It's going to kind of draw attention to, you know, a little bit more weighted to one side. Maybe there's something in the quilt over here that you like a little bit more. So just kind of drawing them to that could be an option. Then you can also combine the two. So if there wasn't enough variations with the diamond or the starburst, you can throw them all together and wow, really create really neat stuff. This is where I start getting really excited and can be super overwhelming. So hopefully I haven't lost you all. But with this pieced block, I use the quilting to create those diamond designs just by going to the corner and out, filling it in. And then even in the corners, those white corners, adding some wedges to help draw attention to the center. So combining the diamond design with those wedges is a great option. Again, if you're not sure if it's gonna work, just try tracing it out on a block or you know, sketch it out and see if it works for you. Now, Mary, one of my Long Army members, had a great question. She said, do you have examples of dot to dot in curved piecing? And this is the perfect example that dot to dot is not just for modern um, geometric quilts. You can use this in any kind of quilt. So from traditional to modern, it, wherever you find it, you go for it. Now, some people will say, oh, if a quilt is all straight lines, I will only use straight lines. Or if a quilt is all straight lines, I'm only gonna use curved lines. It doesn't matter. You do what you think looks good. And for this double wedding ring, I thought it would be fun to add a little bit of a, you know, geometric shape to it just to fill in the area. Now, remember, that's our starburst design. So I'm quilting up to the edge. I'm echoing the edge. This just happens to be a curve and then returning to the home base. So I think it looks nice right up next to those half um, feathers and a little bit of curvy areas where they come together. Just a little bit of contrast right there. So you can definitely use this in all kinds of quilts. So really, when you come across them, you challenge yourself to see what kind of variations you can come up with. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Now in the Help How Do I Quilt It Challenge, we saw the star blocks and I talked about some of my favorite star block designs. Well, this particular example, I'm quilting that wedge shape in the star block, going up to the edge, echoing the side, coming home. In this particular example, I was, Kind of grouping all those pieces together so even though this is a printed panel and i have my different you know um, points to my star in this example i'm just quilting it like it's one star maybe in this particular quilt it's i wanted to pull it together i didn't want it to be too fussy who knows why you would do that but if you want to pull it together draw attention to the center you can definitely do it now i always tell you all not to point out your mistakes right you don't do it don't do it i'm going to do it because that's my job it's meant to be encouraging. So here you can see that not all my lines come together perfectly in the center. And that wasn't lack for trying. Like this was on a video, like this was me teaching my best stuff. But the thing is, they're not always gonna come to the center and it's gonna be fine. When you step back, our eyes kind of make it look like we want it to look like. And if we don't get it the first time, we'll just try it in the next couple blocks. Eventually we'll get it right. So don't stress out too much if it doesn't come perfectly the center. Plus, if you use a matching thread color, you're not gonna see it anyway. So it's gonna look fine. This is why a matching thread color covers a lot of uh, quilting errors. So let's talk about just a few more pictures. Hopefully you're hanging with me. You can use this in irregularly shaped areas. So for those quilts that you're like, I don't know what I wanna quilt in a heart that has pointed sides. 
wedges, dot to dot, perfect, right? I'm just picking my home base. This one just happened to be the bottom of my heart. And then I'm using the sides of the block to dictate the, the, the shape of the wedges. It's gonna help fill it in nice and quick. It's gonna look great and draw attention to that point. Now, why did I pick the point of the heart? Well, I could have picked the center and it would have looked really good. But if you look at the quilting I'm doing on either side of it, I'm doing some more dot to dot quilting, that point or that bottom point of the heart just happens to be where I ended up. So since I was there, I could fill it in, come back and then move on to the next. So sometimes your home base is determined by what's most efficient for quilting. Now, if you're like, oh my gosh, Angela, I'm still just trying to quilt a straight line. Don't worry about it. You'll come to that point later. But if you feel comfortable with the design, start trying to make it as efficient as possible. And then here's that same wedge combined with the diamond design. So you, we, I have my square that I quilted. I quilted my starburst so it extends from the bottom, but I also use that diamond design to add some echoing around the outside. This is gonna be nice for those littler blocks that have a lot of background area around them. Maybe you really wanna you know, separate it from the background. You don't want to get lost. Using that dot to dot echoing is a really good way to do it because I'm touching some of the points. I can get in and quilt that block and then move on. So here we can see on the inside, I have an example in a second of how to do it on the outside. So those wedges can fit in all sorts of shapes and also using them um, in a direction to create a directional design. So this is just your nice basic nine patch block. But what if this nine patch was part of an Irish chain or something that had a direction to it? Angling that design in the direction it's going is just gonna help kind of um, enhance the pattern and really show off that overall effect. So some of the designs have direction, use that to your advantage. And in triangles, again, you've already seen that, that looks familiar, right? Because it's a panel that I'm showing you right here. But those wedges are gonna fill in all those areas. You can add more wedges, you can add less, depending on how much you love the person you're quilting it for, depending on how fast you have to have it done. It's totally up to you. Now I know sometimes that freedom of choice can be really overwhelming, but let me encourage you that it's, it's fun. So just don't get overwhelmed, just get in there and have fun with it. Now, one of the designs I teach, I'm not gonna talk through this right now, but once you get comfortable with the dot-to-dot -dot design, you can create these designs without breaking thread. So this design is actually quilted in one continuous motion um, and then coming to the center and then coming back out. Again, this on the dot-to-dot um, -dot challenge video, you can see how to do that. But once you master it, it looks so much more difficult than it is. I promise, when you watch the video and you see how easy that is, you'll be like, oh, wow, that's awesome. Now, that doesn't mean you have to tell everybody how easy it is, especially when you're giving them the quilt, but we know how easy it is. This is also something I like to use in bigger blocks. So a little bit, I said this a little bit, but I'm gonna kind of harp on it just a little bit more. You don't have to do both sides of a block. So in these big tri or big stars, I knew I wanted to quilt a feather, but it was pretty big stretched out. So I added some dot to dot along one side of those diamonds to fill in the rest, to kind of make it smaller and then filled in the rest with a feather design. And this is a, not a great picture, but you can see in those big stars how I have that dot to dot design on one side and then filling in the rest. So this is gonna give it a direction. It's gonna kind of give it that, I think it looks like it's twirling, but that could just be because I'm drinking wine at night. I don't know. Um, but then in those smaller stars, then I'm just doing the regular dot to dot design because they're a little bit smaller. But that shape can fit a number of different sizes. So it's gonna give the quilting a cohesive look without overwhelming it. And then in between the blocks. So this is a quilt that Tula Pink did. It, it's um, in between stars. Again, you can look for all these areas to fit it in and you can play around with it and find some di cool different effects to create some secondary effects. So don't just look for quilts with squares, triangles, diamonds, hexagons, irregular shapes, and more. Okay, so this is the last one I'm gonna show you. This is the wedge design in a bigger square, except I'm quilting them in the triangles and then kind of changing the direction of it just to give it a different look. This might be because the corners, maybe I piece this and oh my gosh, the corners actually match. That would be super impressive for me. So that might be an example of why I would wanna do that. So again, I don't want this to be overwhelming at all. This is just meant to show you how many different things you can do with it. Um, definitely feel free to come back and watch the video later on in your quilts, but as you're sitting down at your quilts, look at points you could connect, look at areas you can fill in your wedges, and then also check out that video series because I think you'll find it really helpful to watch how those all come together. Now there are some great questions, I'm gonna address those real quick, and then I'm gonna tell you about a promo that I have a discount um, code on a ruler for you. So first of all, um, Kelly said, this has to do with the free motion challenge, uh, floor and foliage challenge. She said, 
during that challenge, her thread blended in the background just a little too well. She wasn't really asking a question, but I thought, oh, this is a great point. If your thread matches and you can't see it, okay, that's kind of good because you don't have to worry about mistakes. But if you can't see where you're going, turn off your overhead light or cover it with a piece of tape and then have a light from the side, whether it's a window or a lamp, it's gonna cast a shadow and let you see where you've been. So if you're having trouble seeing, especially if you're using black thread on black fabric, it just kind of sucks everything away. So um, definitely, definitely check that out. So Jessica is here helping me. She's gonna be helping with the live chats, writing down your questions, because I can't monitor while I'm talking. I mean, I am good at multitasking, I'm not that good. Um, so great question. So this question came up from Jeannie, or Janine, or Jeannie, and also here. So can you use a walking foot with dot to dot? So I did talk about ruler work and how you can use a ruler and how you can just free freehand it, um, but you can also use a walking foot. Now the one caveat I'll make to that, a walking foot will make it really nice and easy to make those straight lines, but there's gonna be a lot of turning of the quilt. So like if I'm doing that diamond design, then I'm gonna have to turn the quilt to come back the other way. That's not a problem. Just know that there's gonna be some turning. So maybe for your larger, larger quilts, not doing it, but maybe smaller ones might be a little bit easier. Um, but ultimately, yeah, you can do the walking foot with this because it's all straight lines. There's also ways that you can hook them together. And in the in the uh, dot to dot free motion challenge, I do address that. That's just by kind of doing one side and then coming back and doing the other. So look for designs that have longer lines, like the diamond design, and look for ways to break it up so that you don't have to turn the quilt as much. But yes, you can definitely, definitely use walking foot. Now. Throughout my challenges and my chats and my videos, you always hear me say, I like to make it efficient. I don't like to break thread. Why is that? Well, probably because I'm lazy. Okay, no, I'm not lazy. Uh, my very first machine didn't have a needle up and down button. So every time I had to start over, I had to hand crank this wheel to, to get it to go. So I got very adverse to that. I don't like to do it. But sometimes I will go out of my way to not do it. I'm like, look, you can go here, 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 here when it might've just been easier to start and stop. So it's not bad to start a new line of quilting, especially if that's what makes you feel comfortable. So if I do better going one direction, fine, I'm gonna break thread and always go in that direction. There's no problem with that. So just because I have a weird phobia of it doesn't mean that you have to as well, okay? Um, another question, do I ever draw with an erasable pen to see where I should add another line or do I just go for it? It depends, right? It depends on the quilt. If, if it's a design I've done a lot, or I'm not too nervous about it, or it's busy fabric, I'll just go for it. But you know, if Tulip Pink is giving me a quilt that she's gonna bring at market, maybe I want a little bit of security so I might mark it out again. So the, the thing here is you have to do what feels good for you, what you will do. So if it makes you feel more comfortable to mark it out, do it. If you're fine with just winging it, do it. Sometimes I will mark it out, but for the most part, I wing it. But the good thing is that I've done it a lot so I can kind of imagine it. The more comfortable you get with the design, the easier time you'll have imagining what it looks like and the less marking you'll have to do. Not that it's bad to mark or not to mark, just whatever makes you feel comfortable. Hope that helps. Another question, where can I get the stencil that you used? So these designs with line stencils are all on my website. There is a link in the description box below, like 10 bucks. And these are like the original stencils that I got when I first started long arming all those years ago. Um, I've been machine quilting for 18 years, crazy. And so these are the ones that just have always I always, just, I always use them, they're so versatile and you can create different designs. But that wasn't the question you asked, you asked where can you get them? You can get them in the description box below or go to quiltingismytherapy.com. You can find all that stuff there as well. Um, how, this is such a good question. How am I getting the puffy fabric between the quilting lines? In the pictures especially, right? Look at that definition, isn't it gorgeous? That's editing in post. So adding, you know, editing it so that it's a little bit more contrast so that you can see the quilting. Sometimes that's a difficult thing, right? Taking the pictures of it but also having a light off to the side. But if you want that you know, more de definition, you want that little puffy look in between, going with a batting with a higher loft will really help you. So I love Quilter's Dream Select. It's a poly batting, it's nice and thin, but they have a Quilter's Dream Puff that's a little puffier, or wool is a great option too. So aiming for a batting with a little bit more loft. If you ever see a quilt that I've done for Tula Pink and you're like, wow, look at that. I mean, I'm just assuming you're saying that. You might not be saying that. Um, I use two layers of quilter string poly batting on her quilts. So that really, really gives it definition, but also really makes it heavy. So I wouldn't do it on a bed quilt necessarily, but you know, if you were wanting to uh, really have that quilting show up, that's the ticket. Um, if you're use, if you don't want the quilting to show up very much, a lower loft in like cotton will be really good too. It won't have as much definition. 
Um, which chalk is the best to use? Well, usually the chalk that I use is the one that's closest to me. Let's just be honest, right? I, I could have a terrible time keeping track of my marking tools. Um, the chalk, I like the pounce pad, so that's the chalk I use for stencils. Again, they come in different colors, but there's also a really good um, ultimate marking pencil. So this is a chalk pencil. It's made out of the same pounce pad chalk. It's just in a solid form, and the whole thing is chalk. So that's really nice. Although I do have other random chalk pencils. The trick is to, to test it before you use it. I've had um, like water soluble markers, never had a problem with it, only one quilt ever in 18 years. And I could have saved myself the heartache if I had just double checked. So just do a quick little spot check, it'll save you a lot of, a lot of headache. Um, and now when you talk about marking tools, you always hear those scary stories, right? Like I did the fricks on and it came back or the, the chalk wouldn't come off. Um, somebody said, I've heard that blue chalk doesn't come out. Have you had problems with that? I've not had problems with that. Now I think the trick is to use it sparingly. Any marking that I do, I try to do light and sparingly so it's easier to remove. Um, and so even with the blue chalk, I'm not you know, pouring it on there, but I've not ever had any trouble with it coming off. If we think about it, it's, what's nice about that is it's chalk, it's just laying on the surface, even as opposed to a water soluble marker, which is then coloring into the fabric. So I wouldn't worry too much about the chalk. It's, it's gonna come off, especially if you do a little, little test run with it. Just take my word on that one. Um, a question that came up is one that's very, very common. Um, what about my dot to dot quilting book? Didn't I have one? Where is it at? So dot to, I don't have a dot to dot quilting book. I have a, um, sorry, my phone is going off. I have a shape to shape one and shape by shape two. So shape by shape by shape one, shape by shape two. That has the most dot to dot quilting designs, but there's not one specific book on dot to dot. Um, I decided to do the challenge with the handouts instead. So you can go to the challenge and download all those handouts and find it. Um, sorry, I am talking really long, but I just love talking about dot to dot quilting. All right, if I didn't answer your question and you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't catch that, leave it in the comments below. I'm glad to help. But I do want to tell you real quick, um, I have a promo code for you, a little deal. So I have the Arc C ruler. So this is um, one that I showed how to use in the machine quilting with rulers challenge. And it's nested rulers, so a smaller one and a bigger one. So you can watch the video and see how to work that. So for this week only, I'll have 20% off the Arxy ruler if you want to get it. You're going to use the promo code live chat when you check out. So live chat promo code will get you a discount on that Arxy ruler. And if you want to check out the video on how to do that or how to use it, um, that's under the machine quilting rulers challenge. I'll put links to that in the description box below. You know, I don't always talk this long, but I love showing different examples of dot to dot quilting. I love showing you what you can do with the quilts, with very basic designs on your quilts and really enhance it. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Next week's live chat is gonna be all about borders. So I had a borders and backgrounds challenge that I talked through. Um, you can check that, or I'll talk through that, giving you how I work through borders, how I address the quilt and, and how I make it easier on myself. Cause you know, I've got an easier way to do it. And I hope you'll join me for that. If you've liked any of my live chats or any of my videos, I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up because it helps other quilters find it as well. And I thank you so much for joining me. I cannot wait to see you next week when we talk about borders. Until then.